Ostrich Girl by Ray Prather. This is one of my favorites. The Ostrich Girl is for Sherlina Matisse Prather, my daughter, near an old fishing village called Malindi on the east coast of Africa lived an old fisherman called Said Mazi and his wife, Mama Halima. Every day early in the morning, Papa Mazi walked to the sea to join the other fishermen. Late in the evening, he would return home with his catch. What do you think? Does that look like a fish? He's walking home and he sees something. Look at the beautiful trees. He always hurried along the narrow village streets through the flowing palms of a tiny trail past the thorn tree and was home in no time at all. Today, as he came to the thorn tree, Papa Mazi saw a bundle lying under it. As he looked at it more closely, the bundle seemed to move. There is surely something wiggling in there, he said. Many years as a fisherman had taught him that whenever there was a wiggle, it was time to make the catch. But this was a bundle and it was not in the sea. It moved again, but it made no sound at all. It's a strange thing that moves but makes no sound, he said to himself. Finally, he swallowed his fear and grabbed the wiggling bundle. Clutching the bundle in his arms, Papa Mazi hurried along to his house at the edge of the forest. Mama Halima was sitting in the doorway weaving a Cecil basket. She sold her baskets in the village. Mama looked up and waved to her fisherman like she did every day. But today there was something different. Mama Halima dropped her basket and ran to see what Papa was treating so gently. Papa! What is it? she asked. Papa Mazi, what do you have there? she called again. Oh, Papa Mazi, sighed Mama as she took the bundle from him and unwrapped a little wiggling baby girl. Where did you find such a sweet little bundle? There she is running, see that? Oh my gosh, she's so excited. Under the thorn tree, he answered. She was lying there just like a big old ostrich egg. Who does she belong to? asked Mama. I don't know, replied Papa. We must ask in the village. That's what we must do, Mama. No, yelled Mama. We'll keep her. I'm not going to give her back. But Mama, argued Papa Mazi, we must ask. What do you think is going to happen? Mama wants to keep the baby and Papa wants to find out who it belongs to. Oh, look at now we're going into the village. The next morning, Papa Mazi went to the village very early. He asked everywhere, but no one seemed to be missing a child. He went from door to door and still the answer was the same. So Papa returned home to Mama with the good news. Even before he reached the house, Mama could see the big grin on his face. What shall we call her? asked Mama. Well, let me think, said Papa Missy. When I found her, she looked just like an ostrich egg. Little ostrich girl, said Mama. You shall be called Oster. Many seasons came and went. Mama and Papa were very happy but they were afraid that one day someone might claim Oster. So they never took her to the village. Some of the villagers started saying that the old man and old lady that lived on the hill had taken a baby from the ostriches. When Oster had grown quite big, she began to wonder why Mama and Papa never took her to the village. Mama Halima even sent Papa Mazi to sell her baskets. Every time Oster went to the edge of the hill where she could look down at the village, Mama would shout, Come away! There are wild things out there! That must be hard for a baby Oster. She never gets to play with anyone. She's all alone. 
you see her there? She's looking out at the village. Feeling lonely, I bet. One day, when Mama fell asleep while weaving a basket, Oster stole away to the edge of the hill and down the trail past the thorn tree and through the flowing palms. Soon she was right in the middle of the village. The streets were narrow, the houses had bati roofs, and the village children were all outside playing. Who are you? One boy asked. I'm Oster, she replied. Oh, they all said together. She's the ostrich girl. I'm not an ostrich girl, shouted Oster. I'm a real girl. I live up there on that hill. We know where you live. That's why we know that you're the ostrich girl. Mama and Papa Mazi found you under a thorn tree. That's where the ostriches make their nests. They stole you from the ostriches and made you a girl. Go ask them. Oster started to cry. She ran as fast as an ostrich, down the streets, back up the hill through the flowing palms and to the tiny trail that led to her house. Oh, look at, there she is crying. Look at all these things, they have corn. I don't know what that is, Uhuru Square. It's a hotel. They're selling mangoes, and I guess Maji means water. Mama Halima stood at the edge of the hill, crying into her basket. Mama, Mama, cried Oster. Tell me that you are my real Mama. Tell me that you didn't find me under the thorn tree. Tell me that I'm not the child of ostriches. Oh, tell me, Mama, tell me. Mama Halima was so sad that she could not talk. She just kept on crying. Oster tore away from Mama and ran toward the bush. My mother ostrich, she called. My father ostrich, where are you? Answer me, answer me. Somebody answer me. Please answer me. She called again and again, but nobody answered. Oster ran and ran without stopping to rest. She ran deep into the forest. After a very long time, Oster came upon an old woman sitting on a river bank. See, there she is. She's like, oh, here's the bridge. Who are you? asked Oster. I'm the queen of the forest, said the woman, who looked to Oster very much like a witch. Who are you calling? Why are you crying? she asked. I'm looking for my parents, said Oster. I have been told that I'm the child of ostriches. Mmm, said the old woman. Find me some water from a river that has no frogs, and then I will help you. Water with frogs in it ruins my magic spells. Then Oster knew she really was a witch, but she took the water vessel and went off to find a river with water that had no frogs. Look at that river, and there she is. I guess she didn't like that water. It must have been full of frogs. Oster found eight rivers but from each river came the sound of frogs croaking. At the next river, there were no sign of frogs. As Oster bent down to scoop up the water, a river snake appeared. Oster dropped the vessel and ran swiftly, but the river snake followed close behind. When she reached the place where the witch had been sitting, the witch was gone. Oster kept on running, and finally she saw a little house on the edge of the forest that looked just like her own. Oster headed straight for the door with the river snake now close on her heels. Stop, called the hoarse voice of the witch. The river snake stopped dead in his tracks. Go rest in that tree over there, friend river snake, ordered the witch. And to Oster she said, don't worry about the water from the river right now. Come and help me make ready this meal. We're going to have a feast. It will be a most grand occasion you and that hungry old river snake will be my guests. And tonight, if you listen well, I will teach you my magic. Did you go to dinner to learn magic? I think I would. Let's see what happens. When the meal was ready, Oster and the witch sat down to eat and river snake uncoiled himself from the tree and joined them. 
Eat, drink, and be merry, my little chocolate girl, said the witch. She ate a lot, and so did the river snake. But Oster hardly ate at all. She was very hungry and tired, but she was also very uneasy about the river snake. He never stopped looking at her. When there was no more food to be had, the river snake turned to the witch. Give me the chocolate girl, he demanded. If you don't, I'll turn the rivers red with blood. No, said the witch. I have fed you all these years until you're round with fat, and now you think you're more powerful than I? Huh? I ought to change you back into the dwarf you were before. I think I will. Suddenly, the river snake's body started to twist and turn. The snake's head turned into the head of a dwarf. The arms and shoulders of a dwarf popped out of the snake's body. Finally, the snake's tail disappeared. And right on the spot where the snake once crawled stood a funny looking dwarf. <laughs> the witch began to laugh, and so did Oster. The embarrassed dwarf ran off into the forest. He ran deep into the forest where before the witch had turned him into a river snake, he had reigned as king of the forest. And there his old forest friends gathered to greet him. Look at all his friends. There's a lion. Is it a stole monkey? Is it a giraffe? And a leopard? You! Friend, forest eagle, he said. I must have the girl who runs as fast as an ostrich. Go bring me that chocolate girl who is now with that awful witch. The giant forest eagle flew off in a hurry. Friend, forest eagle flew quietly into an open window of the house where Oster and the witch were already asleep. He crept close to where the chocolate girl was lying. He snatched her from her bed and flew off into the forest. The dwarf was waiting eagerly when he saw Oster. He jumped and danced with joy. As the giant eagle landed, Oster demanded to be set free, but the dwarf wouldn't listen. I will make the whole forest yours, my sweet little chocolate girl who runs like an ostrich, he said. All my friends here will serve you well, and I will build you a most beautiful house. But for now, rest here until morning. Do you think you could rest if you were in that situation? What does that even mean? the whole forest. Early in the morning, before anyone awakened, Oster ran away deeper into the forest. My mother, where are you? She called. She made so much noise that she woke up the dwarf. Oster looked back and saw that he was close behind. Oops, she cried as she tripped over a squirrel with a huge bushy tail. I will save you from the dwarf, said the squirrel. Get in front of me. The squirrel waved his great bushy tail at the sky and the wind whistled. He kicked up his hind legs and started to dig in a great big hurry. In no time at all, he had made a hill so steep that the dwarf was unable to climb it, and Oster was safe on the other side. Come, said the squirrel, I will take you to my master. Over here roared a loud voice that seemed to come from the top of the trees. This is a strange forest, isn't it? So many things, people, animals. It was I who sent my squirrel to save you from the dwarf who stole my kingdom. The giant lifted Oster onto his tall shoulders and carried her off to his huge boabab tree. The giant put Oster high in the top of his tree. He had made her a house in the big hole where his squirrel once stored his food. Oster shouted at the giant, but like the dwarf, he wouldn't listen. He just laughed and shook the tree and gave her a talking hat to keep her company. He would not let her leave the tree. Oh, she sounds like she got in trouble from one person to another. Late one night, the giant and the squirrel went away to spy on the dwarf. Oster climbed down from the tree and ran off into the forest. My mother, where are you? She called once more. The beautiful ostrich girl has gone, sang out the talking hat. The chocolate girl has fled, called the talking hat. When the giant finally heard the call, it was already much too late. There she is, just running away. Oster ran so far and so fast that she was finally out of the forest completely. Now her legs were tired and her feet began to ache. She fell upon the bush grass and went to sleep. When Oster awakened, she found herself surrounded by ostriches. They had very long legs and black and white curly feathers. Where is my mother, she demanded. The big birds just giggled and made their funny ostrich sounds. 
Then Oster heard someone crying far away. The crying sounded familiar. Look at the ostriches. They're curious about her, aren't they? Oster jumped up and ran faster than she ever had before. She came to the tiny trail that led to the thorn tree. There under the thorn tree sat Mama Halima, weeping into her basket and waiting for her little ostrich. When Mama looked up from her basket, there stood Oster smiling. Mama Halima grabbed her big bundle and went off to the village to meet Papa Mazin. Oster never again ran off into the forest and whenever anybody called her the little ostrich girl, she always just said, that's why I'm called Oster. Do you think she's happy to be home? I think she's happy to be home. And how happy is Mama Halima to have her baby ostrich back?